Hi everyone, this is Coordinate Hackathon Team 8, uh, working on space utilization and metrics challenge. And the way we approached this problem was by looking at the demand side and supply side of this equation of the post-COVID workplace environment. So in terms of demand side, we looked at the changes in employees' expectations about how they work and they, where they work and how these changes will affect all conversations around office planning or portfolio planning and optimization as well. And so uh, we looked at specific issues like mental health, importance uh, of uh, preventing uh, mental health issues in workplace, uh, the importance of team collaboration enablement through workplace that will be still very relevant in post COVID times as well. And then we also looked at the sensitivity analysis of how occupancy levels will change once employees are allowed to come back to the office uh, once lockdown restrictions are lifted. So we looked at the data set of uh, occupancy metrics for one particular building as, as an example, as a case, uh, the building in Manhattan, an, an office space of a Fortune 500 company about 30,000 square feet large. And we use this data set um, collected from December to February this year as a way to create the baseline for occupancy in terms of weekly patterns. Then we also applied some assumptions around work from home adoption for a particular category of the employees, regular employees, as we call them, those who worked from office, um, not working from home in any significant manner. And now they are affected by these changes. They are going to spend more time working from home, at least one day a week. And we, the, our assumption, it's about 70% of these employees. This is based on uh, some of the surveys uh, that were already um, implemented by the industry players. And so with these assumptions, what we found is that for this particular building, um, the peak occupancy level will drop from about 71% pre-COVID to about 47% after um, the lockdown restrictions are lifted. And this is just looking at the impact of work from home adoption for one particular part of the employees, regular or conservative employees who never worked from, from home before. So this is a conversation starter for us. We will expand this analysis to include other categories of employees and visitors. And obviously the numbers will be adjusted even further. So this is the demand part of things. Now over to you, Andy, to talk about the supply part of things and how we think about that. Thank you. Great, <clears throat> thanks, Elder. Um, we're here at the Instant Group, where we've obviously been speaking to a lot of different clients from a different industry sectors and backgrounds. Um, and really some of the viewpoints that we kind of pulled out of those conversations is seeing that in light of COVID-19, um, we continue to see corporate real estate um, professionals returning to cost reduction strategies, um, which often have a direct correlation with portfolio footprints, be it leased, be it flexed, or, or, or an interim solution. Uh, this comes at a time when obviously, as Raul was mentioning, um, about the human-centric needs that were moving up the agenda, such as well-being, space planning, uh, productivity, and productive use of space, and how that's me measured. And what we're seeing now is obviously a greater impetus and, and pressure put on heads of CRE to get that balance right. Um, so with that in mind, we're starting to see a greater shift for some towards portfolio segmentation. Um, so that's utilizing the right space and the right space type in the right place at the right time for that business. And this will obviously ebb and flow as we move away from today's scenario into a post-COVID world and a longer term picture. Um, as a result, and in light of the, the ob obvious growing work at home contingent that's been brought about by COVID, um, we're already seeing many firms now accelerate or revisit um, hub and spoke strategies um, that and al allow for more agility and flexibility within portfolios. Um, this, is, this is seeing obviously a natural right sizing of more core leased hub facilities, um, 
providing face of crime for primary business functions, but with a necessity, obviously, in a post-COVID world for, for lower densities, operating on higher agilities, and maintaining that productive environment for doing business. The scale of right sizing, uh, depending on the corporates that we're speaking to, um, uh, varies. That we're seeing anything from 10 or 20 percent for hub, uh, hub locations down to either a reduction of, say, 70, 80 percent in terms of the space required um, for those centres. So it's a repurpose, a revisit uh, to, to kind of space as a, uh, as a tool, space as a purpose uh, for doing business and allocating that space in the right areas um, uh, from, from a business accessibility and also from a cost perspective. Um, obviously, in light of that, we're seeing a growing need for closer to uh, the work at home contingent, uh, more accessible, um, which builds out a need for, for kind of metro planning. Um, and these spoke sites will naturally evolve and contain a mix of non-core lease flex or even semi-flex touchdown options or membership card um, access uh, to, to, to office space that help to fulfill some of those uh, contact voids that working from home brings that you were mentioning before, Elder, um, and also allow for more shorter term commitments that fit around headcount movement, which is going to be key going forward and is, is somewhat of an unknown at present. Um, what this means and what we're, we're seeing really from a space metric for, uh, perspective is a shift towards reviewing densities differently, um, looking at the provision per head rather than or necessarily per desk. And in the near term, obviously, you know, a need for uh, a return to work and how we do that, providing more faith per person for physical distancing, but offsetting maybe with a higher agility ratio based around that growing or that certainly uh, contingent that has grown that are working from home. Um, a longer term view is obviously a necessity to monitor and report better around utilization of space and how that links and has a direct link to productivity. Um, and as, as this plays out, we move into a kind of medium term or longer term view, I think businesses will put, be putting that at the top of the agenda um, and reporting on, on how they really use space and how much space they need and, it's, and the right type to creating um, the right business output. Um, and hopefully that, that moves on to, to you, Simon, um, and your section. Great, yes, thanks, Andy. So um, I'm looking at um, what metrics we should be tracking. Um, this is really relevant for us because it's exactly the conversation we're having with our clients at the moment anyway. Um, I think we were all in agreement that um, the traditional measures of a building are still very relevant. Uh, so we still need to have a really good understanding of the office utilization and the desk density. Uh, I think like Andy mentioned, but it's, the measurements are going to be much more about the person than the desk. So, and also I think the utilization is going to be to inform on risk rather than density of the office space. So that's one metric that is going to still be collected, probably collected in exactly the same way as that clients are doing it at the moment. Uh, it's just going to be weighted differently to reflect on strategy. One of the other key metrics uh, we uh, believe is going to be ramped up is transport. Um, this also really sort of talks about the um, hub and spoke office facilities as well. There's going to be a requirement for people to use public transport less and in a safer way. Uh, for the immediate, we're looking at uh, being able to have a better understanding of travel to work in terms of people who can walk or cycle or drive are going to be less risk averse to people who have to travel on public transport. Um, so that's ramping up as being a, a, a key metric. Also, obviously, a metric that many clients are looking at at the moment is the office suitability, how to adapt and what needs to be done to adapt the office space for the immediate and then informing on the longer term. So there are going to be, uh, there's going to be a much more uh, focus on things like hygiene, cleaning regimes, all of the sort of facilities management aspects that are going to be crucial, uh, certainly in early days back to work. And then uh, the, the last sort of section is having a much better understanding of the worker profiles. Um, uh, I think you mentioned earlier on in terms of how we can 
understand of, uh, office dependency on the worker types. But we have been uh, really diving into the wellness and, and, and uh, this human centric measure, which should be considered as much more important. Who needs to get back into the office more quickly than others uh, on uh, their well-being, uh, the, the facilities they have at home to support their home working? So these sort of four pillars, the building, which includes the utilisation of a density, transport, office suitability and worker types um, are all going to be uh, new metrics that clients are going to have to consider when they're getting back into the office.